Hi, my name is Ruteno Nyamuda and welcome back to another beautiful, exciting, extraordinary, place your adjective right here, episode of In My Twenties. In my twenties. So I am so excited to be back. There is so much that has been happening in my life. I went overseas for a little bit. My sister graduated. Um, She got her MBA from Oxford University. University. Then I came back. I was part of a Toastmasters competition. So I'm so excited to introduce you to today's guest. She is a friend of mine who's been such a close friend since our university days, where we used to get up to the most. Um, And just in our adulthood, our friendship is just sustained all of the years she flew all the way to Cape Town from Zoom to be part of the In My 20s podcast it's not the truth but I keep telling myself that because you know it's in my 20s um and she's also the person who allowed me or rather showed me how to appreciate a really good gin and tonic so without further delay here she is hi my name is Tina Shembo I am a purchasing and supply chain specialist and love a good gin and tonic, love family, love easy breezy. That's about it. Still discovering life and everything it has to offer. Now on every episode of the In My Twenties podcast, you guys know that there are always these incredible mind moments or gem moments that you just want to pause and absorb the moment. And this is just one of them. Your parents are the best they could. Mm. Honestly, number one, when your parents are parenting you, mm. right, it's sure they could have had three siblings before you, but you are the first of your kind mm. and you required a different attention. And so what worked on sibling number one may not have been the right strategy for sibling number three and mm. so on. So every time that they had a child, they were learning to be a different type of parent. So the In My Twenties podcast is split up into three sections. In the first section, we get to hear a little bit more about Tino's career journey. In the second section, we dive into today's topic, which is all about Tino's move back home. And finally, rounding up all three sections is a conversation on being in your 20s. And yes, oh yes, that all-encompassing quarter-life crisis. So without further delay, let's get straight into it. All right, so Tino, we want to hear a little bit about your career history. First of all, tell us a bit about your background. Um, so I'm from Buloyo in Zimbabwe. Um, basically, I say I grew up there because my formative years were in Buloyo, which was, I feel like, my late kid into teenage years. Um, and then I came to UCT for varsity, um, thinking that I knew what I was going to do and it was going to be simple, clear, plain, one, two, three years, and we're <laughs> out of there with that distinguished paper. Yes. Um, but I got here and I knew nothing about what I wanted, who I was, where I was going, what it would all mean. Mm. Um, so there was a lot of exploration during that time, so that three years turned into four and a half years. Mm. But, yeah, we got a piece of paper. Um, after that, I worked in Cape Town for close to three years. Mm. Where did you work in Cape Town? What were you doing in Cape Town? Um... I worked for a manufacturing company Mm -hmm. um, in the food and beverage industry. Mm -hmm. And again, by, I don't want to say by luck, but by, maybe just by, I don't know what the right word is, by connections. Mm -hmm. And I think also just by perhaps life, life um, destiny, Mm -hmm. if you want to say. Um, and basically, I got there, and when I got there, again, I thought I was going to be doing one thing, and I ended up doing something completely different, mm-hmm. which was a blessing, because it actually it turned out to be something I'm int- I'm fine, I was finally interested in, and I'd never heard of before. Okay. And that's what I've built my career on, which is purchasing and supply chain. Mm-hmm. What does that um, even mean? That sounds sounds very, very big, very broad. I mean, very... They're, yeah, there are many different words for it. So it's like being a buyer, procurement, mm. supply chain operations, like there are many different... Um, facets to it and people can use different words to explain it so generally when people say buyer it's very direct it's being like you buy what the demand is when people say supply chain you know it involves the operations the logistics side of things as well as the buying and the purchasing of it Mm. um procurement is also closer to buying than i'd say purchasing Mm -hmm. but yeah just different different words for basically the same thing but every industry is different so every industry will come with its different challenges and demands and different techniques Mm. um but yeah but i mean i've always enjoyed the challenge it's basically you're solving problems okay and you're preparing to not have problems okay Okay. (laughs) so um yeah so that's what i got into and i've 
enjoyed it ever since, and I carried on studying for that. Mm. Um, so I found one of the institutes that covers it, and I've been studying with them since 2016. Mm-hmm. So I shall be done this year, and I'll be known as a supply chain specialist, and we'll just keep on going and see what happens. A whole specialist. A whole specialist. A whole specialist. You see, that, that's the thing is like in different industries, I won't lie, for, for being in the media industry, mm-hmm. you study your degree, you step out into the industry, and then it's all learned by doing. I think one of the yeah. big mistakes and big faults that we have in our media industry is there's no continuous learning that you have to do unless it's of yourself. Yeah, but I mean, also in um, in this field as well, it generally is, I think your experience counts for more than what... Um, paperwork you have mm. experience is very important but yeah i mean at the end of the day it is out of the box thinking solving problems making sure the problems don't happen again mm. better ways to deal with it next time um yeah and saving money and and it just so happens it is in a quite in the demand profession mm. because companies now in today's world want to save money and the best place to save money is from your courts it's, it's a central thing to any organization after studying in, or after working rather, in Cape mm-hmm. Town, you moved back to Zim. Mm-hmm. Um, so how was the move back to Zim? Why did you move back to Zim? Did you want to move back to Zim? Um, I did not want to move back to Zim. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I, I didn't plan my move back to Zim. Mm-hmm. So from Cape Town, I moved to Joburg because I was at the point in my life when I was tired of the Cape Town scene. So mm. I went back to Joburg and I was in Joburg, I think, for just over a year. Mm-hmm. But I didn't also feel, when I was in Joburg, I didn't feel like it was where I was supposed to be. Yeah. And it was at, like, a very brave time in my life where I was like, ah, oh, you know what, self-discovery, <laughs> learn who you are, what you want, you have nothing to lose, mm. you have no one depending on you, mm. you got a little bit of savings, you'll be fine, you yeah. know, live life, explore, blah, blah, blah. And I hadn't been home for a very long time so when I first went home to Zim it was like oh go home visit chill take some time out think about what you want um etc etc um yeah so at first there was a lot of back and forth between Zim and Joburg and then eventually I was like I'm gonna be home for a while Mm. so um I was at home um still yeah I wasn't yeah I was jobless at this point Mm because I left my how old were you how old were you when you moved back home 25 going on 26. Okay. Somewhere there. 25 okay. going on 26. No, 26. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go with 26. Um, and yeah, and just seeing what the Zim was like. And at that point, because at that point, a lot of people were actually coming to Zim. Again, most of them I would say unintentionally mm. due to like permit issues or whatever it is. So there were a lot of, when I first got home to Zim, there were a lot of people that I knew or whatever. So I, it didn't feel. I didn't feel out of place being back home mm. or, you know, so it was almost just, okay, we'll go, we'll see how this goes. I still yeah. had like some level of comfort, like, mm. you know, things will be okay. So paint a picture for me. So now you're going back home. You spent how many years away from home with visiting in and out since you studied? So since I started studying, it was what, at that time, I think it was eight years mm. away from home. So you obviously, you know, you have, you go home. To visit, yeah, yeah. You're going to visit, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, not like to live. So yeah, that would yeah. be like eight years since I'd fully lived in Zim. Mm, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So eight years being out of the nest, eight years being not living in Zim, but mm-hmm. having grown up in Zim. So just paint for me the picture of what it's like and the experience of spending eight years away from the nest, mm-hmm. going back home, but going back to live. You know, at home as well. How was that for you? How was the adjustment? The first, yeah, the first few, the first few months were probably actually very easy because it still felt like you were just visiting, mm. and they would treat you like a visitor. So there would be like food in the fridge, juice, <laughs> you know. Mm. Um, yeah, like like they were. It was accommodative. Mm. Um, and then now when it's like, oh, you're here to stay, you know, you also just pick up on a few more responsibilities and blah blah blah. Um, yeah, and then, but I, yeah, I must say my parents have been very gracious in welcoming me back mm. into the nest. So mm. I don't feel cramped or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, there are some times I'm like, but this is not how I would live in my own home. Like, you know, mm. you're just like, yeah, no, I would do that slightly differently. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this it's your house, so here we go, <laughs> you know. We'll do you use still, the full fat milk. Yeah, do you, do you <laughs> still have to abide by home rules, like your parents' rules at home and stuff? Or do you feel like there's a little bit of liberation? 
I mean, I, I'm the youngest. I've always had a bit of a fight back spirit. But like, um, I think I'm I'm definitely easier to live with now than I was in high school. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely more respectful and obedient mm-hmm. now. But um, I think it's also because obviously, yeah, I've grown, I've matured. They've also grown and matured. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. My parents have grown and matured. So yeah, so I, I don't. I definitely don't feel cramped. Yeah, and this could be just my particular parents. I don't feel cramped. Mm. I have freedom. I have. Um, um, yeah, I just have. Yeah, I can basically have my own life. Then I get to come home to my parents, who I I get along with. Mm. So yeah, so it's almost like yeah, living my life, and then I get home to yeah to my mom and dad. Mm. Um, Hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's a comfort and also, yeah, I mean, sure, you do want your independence and your space and yeah. if you're used to that, for sure. And I've thought about even, like, moving out of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and I may, at some point, I may actually just take the plunge and do it. Mm-hmm. But um, still, live in, still live in Bulawayo? Yeah, maybe. I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, but, again, I don't... It's, I'm not being pushed out and I don't... I'm I'm fairly comfortable. Mm. Um, Do you feel like there 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 might be too much comfort, or is it just like there's no reason to? So why push myself out to do that? Um, is there too much comfort? Maybe, but why is that a bad thing? It's it's, <laughs> a, it's, it's not a bad thing, but but honestly speaking, I don't want to rush into things of. Again, I have lived by myself before, mm. so I've had I have had that experience. Mm. So when it comes again, I hope it's it's not a complete shock. And I mean, everything will be every situation, every environment is different. So it'll have yeah. it's different things. So I, 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 I don't like to think that it will be a complete shock to my system. Be yes. like, oh, I don't know. It's not like I don't know how to do laundry or cook or you know what I mean. So I can <laughs> exist by myself. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just it would just be a. What is the right time? What is a smart decision? I think also it is a gracious thing to be able that my parents can host me essentially mm. um, because I think bigger picture if I figure out where I want and where I want to be mm. at the end of the day it is just things I can add to my savings and things I can take my time with and mm. make the right move instead of just rushing it because everybody my age is like living by themselves Yeah. so yeah. when I say I really don't feel cramped I really don't it's not like every day I have to explain what I did where I went whatever mm. it's generally that like yeah I feel free enough so I is it too much comfort Perhaps sometimes, but I think it's comfort mm, enough. Yeah. Um, and I don't think there's a right way to do anything anymore yeah. because it's a completely different environment. You know, so at our age, our parents had houses, mm. children, blah, 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 blah. So, and some of our, yeah, and yeah, some people do have that, but mm-hmm. it's not in everybody's situation. So I don't think it's the right way of doing anything or getting to where you want to go. There's no yeah. direct way of doing step one, step two, step three, step four. Mm. And then so you end up with the picture that you were raised to believe in. Mm. It's about finding out what you want, how you want to get there, when you're going to get there. And I think that's another thing that life has, the world has shown us now. Like what would generally take, can take one person 10, ten years to do, can take mm. another person two years to do. Um, so... Yeah, just follow your own journey and figure that out. Mm. Mm-hmm. And 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 to that point, it's it's one of the most fascinating things, and we've spoken about this is just how every generation has had their thing. Mm. So, and it's so interesting that you speak about like being in your parents' home. I even know at you know our age of plus minus twenty eight, plus minus minus minus, um, <laughs> that there are quite a few people who are still at home or who have just moved out of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't lived at home since I moved out of the, the house to study, and that was for varsity. So went to yeah. varsity, stayed in university, uh, university reses, um Stayed with my sister in my first couple of years of working, which felt like home because I was staying with my sister. So I didn't have even that responsibility wasn't as much as the weight of the world is on my shoulders. I relied on her for everything. Like she paid, I think she paid all the rent. I might have contributed for like carrots or something because my (laughs) salary, the reality of my salary then wasn't enough to carry that. Mm. Um, And a lot of people are in those similar situations. Not every situation is different. So I know there are some people that if they were to move home, it would not be as hospitable. Mm. And the, the contributions would be a lot more, maybe even if they were, like, living on it. So, like, they choose to... They, they, they don't see going home as an option for them. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just very different. And we're also just such a more, I don't know, emotional generation, if that makes sense. Like, everything is... Feeling, feeling. Sure, I mean, it, it can go back to things. We, we can say that we're like the first, 
well, no, we were like the second generation of people that got tertiary education, mm. right? So it's not, um, I'm not, so my parents went to colleges, mm. right? They went to university. My dad went to university. My mom went to like college, like yeah. teachers, college, tertiary. So they had that tertiary education. Mm. So some of those things where, you know, they say, you know, your children should have more than what you had, mm. right? So we've gone to tertiary and then now, you know, we must build up from that so that the next generation can automatically, you know, black people, everyone must go to university. Standard, you know, you need, a, <laughs> you need, you need a, a something. You need a, <laughs> You can't just be living. something. And yeah. then, you know, one of you out of the offspring must be a doctor, uh, a lawyer. Preachers. Then once that's covered, ah, you can all be whatever you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, even when I studied media, they were like, But not a DJ, great. not like, a musician. Not a musician. That doesn't count. They're like, what is your backup plan? And I was like, economics. Economics <laughs> is my backup plan. <laughs> You did one. I showed did me low. flames. I showed me flames. Ecos and stats. One ah, it, was, it was a joke. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it's just, yeah, I think we're in a generation where a lot, there's so much more mm. that is happening. Also, we're in, in between generations. So there is that industrialization mm. stage, and there's also that, like, what the future is going to look like, mm. right? Which is China. But <laughs> 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 it is, it is. China's taking over. You know, over. it's all the different ways of communicating, making money, mm. and, and all that stuff. So there's also so much because of a part of how the world does not work. So we're exposed to so many things. Mm -hmm. So before, our parents only knew what was happening in southern Africa, if that was it. But now, you know, people are living differently in Sweden. You mm. know what I mean? So like, yeah, I want to live like a Swede. I want to move to Sweden. I want to, you know, whatever. You know, what's happening up in America, whatever. There's so many different ways to live and just be yourself. And mm. having that... And now there's that space to be yourself, yeah. to explore yourself. And there's not the traditional, like the traditional views on holding you back as much. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think we're definitely in a self-discovery. And hopefully, I find, hopefully, you know, you can find your identity and who you really want to be and not who you were raised to believe who you were. I think that's very important. That's um, and then just finding a way to become that and that. Does, and that will mean because our parents are more traditional and they grew up in another era, mm. breaking some comfort levels and breaking some chains mm. um, and stepping out and just doing that. But I think if that's who you want to be, then figure that out and do it. Mm. For me, the 20s journey is always very fascinating to chat about because there is not one person on the podcast who has had a similar 20s journey or called a life crisis, <laughs> or even advice that they gave to people. And this is the 20 something episode. This is the 23rd episode, actually, which mm -hmm. is very fascinating. Um, so I think to start off with, uh, Tino will just give us a summary of your 20s journey. What has your 20s experience been like for you? Tough. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> You know those exam um, questions where it's like for 50 marks and you're like, tough. tough. And they're like, but 50 marks. <laughs> uh, I'll come back to you. <laughs> Question two. No, um, 20s has been... Um, hmm. Unexpected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing you can predict or fully plan for. Um, but you're definitely a time to grow and a lot of reflection. Mm -hmm. Um and also, I think in the 20s, mostly I've learned to forgive myself and to forgive others. And um, what does that mean? Do you, does that mean that you lived for a lot of a lot of your 20s judging yourself and judging others? I think I no, I think I judged myself. And I think in judging myself, part of that learning to deal was almost like trying to put the blame on others for things that, you know, for whatever had happened in my life or whatever. But then, again, you just can't have a self-pity parties. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, little once in a while, having a self-pity party, and I'm so over that. Mm. Like, it, it does nothing for anybody, mm. really. So when I say self-pity party, it's almost like you sit there and you're like, oh, why me, la, 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 oh, but why, why then? You know, my parents should have done something differently. Like, no, it's your parents are the best they could. Mm. Honestly, number one, one thing that, I don't know who told me this, but it was like, when your parents are parenting you, mm. right, it's, sure, they could have had three siblings before you, mm. but you are the first of your kind, mm. and you required a different attention, a different 
everybody's different. So what worked on sibling number one may not have been the right strategy for sibling number three and mm. so on. So every time that they had a child, they were learning to be a different type of parent. Mm. So to put it all on them and be like, yeah, but why did you do this? Why didn't, why didn't you know better? Why didn't it? No, mm. they did the best they could. Mm. And now you need to suck <clears throat> it up and make the most of what you've been given. And at the end of the day, it's a lot more than what you ever thought. Yeah. So, yeah, no more self-pity parties. And... Just, yeah, learn in your 20s, make mistakes, forgive yourself. And mm. again, it's never, whatever happens to you, whatever life hands you or you have to work harder for, it's nothing personal. It's mm. just, it's life. Mm. That's that. And life really isn't fair for anybody. Mm, sure. Um, and on your 20s journey and 20s experience, have you ever experienced the quarter life crisis? Yeah. <laughs> okay, when did you experience the quarter life crisis? What was it about? 20, How did you get over it? 25... Oh, so on the dot, on the 25. On the 25. Okay. Hit I'm still in it, so I don't know. You're still in it. Three, mm. years, of, three years of crisis. Three and a half years of crisis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, 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 is your, what is the quarter life crisis for you? And what has your quarter life crisis Quarter life crisis, crisis is just, um, what does this all mean? How do I get happy? Will I ever reach what I want to reach? Mm. Um, you know, um, who am I really? Um, mm-hmm. what if did I make a wrong choice along the way? Mm-hmm. Um, will I ever actually do something important or purposeful? You know, mm-hmm. will I ever have what will make me satisfied? Mm-hmm. And satis- when I say satisfied, I don't mean just like happy and comfortable. I mean truly soul, mind, body, satisfied. Mm-hmm. Is there such a thing, you mm-hmm. know, where you just stop questioning everything? Like in your question... I believe this. Why do I believe it? Is mm. this really what I believe? Mm. Um, yeah. But I wonder, is that is that just a court life crisis or is that a life crisis in general? Because unless you've... It happened at my... Well, I don't know. 25. What I think is going to be a quarter life. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when it happened for me. So I'm saying mm. it's a quarter life crisis. Because I think also these periods, I don't think it's... I don't think it's a, I don't think it could have happened to me at twenty. It could have happened to me at thirty five, at mm. fifty. But I also don't think it's only going to happen once in my life. Yes, yeah. Um, so you keep questioning. It was my first life crisis. If I yeah. don't want to say quarter, it was my yeah. first life crisis. Mm. Um, and what yeah. and what have you felt, or how have you grown through them? Because obviously, you go from you're 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 getting older. From twenty five to twenty eight is a is a good three years. The questions. <laughs> From 25 plus plus years to where you are now yeah. um, is a big difference. But obviously you've grown and you've changed. The The questions you were maybe asking at 25 are not the questions you're asking today. Mm. Um, do you feel that there has been a difference in the questions that you've been asking yourself from 25 until now? Because over the years, obviously you have had personal growth and you've mm-hmm. had personal revelations. Or do you feel like it's still similar? I think some of the questions I had at 25... I realized I may never actually get an answer for them. Mm, like what? Mm, I don't know now. <laughs> or just in general. But I knew that I wouldn't get an answer to every single question. Mm. And I think um, um, and I think that's part of life, right? Not knowing the answer to everything and not knowing what everything means and the purpose of everything, the reason behind it, the timing behind it, like all that. And so... It's almost just a you just got to keep going and um, mm. just learning to stay focused, to get up when you don't feel like getting up. Mm. Um, yeah, and choosing every day to that, this is where I want to be, this is where I'm going, it's going to get me here. So I think in the last, since my 25, um, just yesterday, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I've, I've definitely been like, Okay, I know what I want. Yeah. i got to get up, work for it. It's not going to be given. I mean, I already knew it wasn't going to be given to me. But mm. um, learning the true meaning of, like, hard work mm. and just facing adulthood and just being like, you know what? Everybody's adulthood is different. You mm. can't hide from it. It's going to find you one way or the other. Mm. Um, it's going to question everything. But it's, it's, it's yeah, it's... It's forming who you are, who you believe in. There's certain things that I've learned to like, completely let go. And, like, how I... If you want things that I was so stern about before, I'm mm. now like, ah, you know what? Do you, boo-boo? Do you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, because, again, everybody's happiness is completely different. Mm. And they say comparison is the thief of joy. And it, it really is. It's just, you know... Um, 
That's deep. Yeah, just it's just I think learning to know who you are, learning mm. yourself, and then you know believing in yourself. Mm. Because again, you, you grew up with some people saying I believe in you, yada yada yada, but it's believing in yourself now. Mm. Um, yeah. That's wild. That's wildly deep. That is a mind moment of note. Is that is a wild mind moment, actually. People say that they believe in you, and it's very often that people are like, I see this in you, you're yeah. going to be this kind of yeah. person, and you're like, I reject, I reject, I reject, because you, you don't like, what, see what that. Do you, see? Yeah. you don't see that. But and it's believing in what you believe, right? So it's, <clears> not, it's <throat> not even just, yeah, I'm, I'm strong, I, yeah. can, I can do Monday yeah. to Friday, yeah. five, four, three, two, weekend. <laughs> like, it's not like believing in how much you can, it's literally believing in what you believe in, Yo. and standing firm in that, so that yeah. One day when someone asks you to do an intro, an eight second intro, and ask you who who are you, you can say something and be know. like, that wasn't false. Yes, yeah, it yeah. wasn't just yeah. a made up line. Yes. Yeah. But also, what's powerful in that is a conversation we had a few days ago, and I was telling you someone spoke something into my life. You said not every spirit is a positive spirit, or not every word that comes from someone has necessarily had the best intentions for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also very interesting, because if you don't know who you are, if you are, okay, just to make things very plain and simple, if you know that you were born to be a doctor, this is the path, and someone comes to you and says, you know what? You're meant to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they speak that into your life. And you don't know that you were, you, you haven't done that self develop actualization. You will pursue the route of a lawyer only to find out later in your life that your deepest purpose was the calling to be a doctor. Yeah. So if you don't know who you are, the path can be swayed very easily if you don't have that root and that foundation. Mm. And I think also I've learned that. Not every you have to seek knowledge. You have to seek that mm. perspective of yourself. Um, you gotta seek um, when you're like, oh, I don't know what what I am, who I am. You have to seek it. You can't just like sit there and be like, you know, I'll find out who I am. You have to push yourself. So you have to challenge yourself and put yourself in environments and in um, circumstances. I'm not saying be dangerous, but like <laughs> put yourself in circumstances where you learn. Mm. You learn who you are. Mm. You know, perspective is either like your power or it's your prison. So it's literally just how you see into things. So is it going to be like, oh, this is it. This is what I see and I'll never get out of this, whatever. Or is it like, this is where I am. This is not where I want to be. How can I get out of this? And I'm getting out of this. Um, so Tino, like since I've known you, since I met you in varsity a few years ago, last year, because we haven't graduated yet because we're still young, wild and free. Yay. Mm. Um, but since I've met you, you've always been, it's very interesting because you have such a depth to you that I think that only people who know you have the privilege and honor of seeing that, really. And when you get deep, it's kind of like where you're just like, let me just take my notebook out or record <laughs> this conversation because I'm going to be shook to another level where even what I thought was solid by the conversation will be shook. Um, what advice would you leave for someone in their 20s right now? I would say hold yourself accountable. So tell yourself, so accept that, you know what, I'm feeling whack about this or whatever. Accept it. Analyze it. Don't hide from it and be like, yeah, but you know. Yeah, don't hide. Don't hide from it. Um, so really step into that place where you're like, oh, so many questions. Who am I? Whatever, whatever. Um, try to find the answers for as much as you can. And the things that you haven't found answers for, believe that in time it will make more sense. Um, and give it time. Give yourself time at the same time. Challenge yourself. Um, do what you got to do. Step out of the box. Um, and eventually, over time, it does get better. You do get braver. Um, anxiety will come and go. But learn you so you know what's best for you. Um, so that you can truly do you. Thank you so much, Tino, for coming on to today's episode of In My Twenties and just sharing your journey with us. Um, I think this conversation is such an important conversation to be having right now, especially in our twenties. There are a lot of people who are thinking about moving home. There are a lot of people who have moved back home. There are a lot of people who have not left home yet. And I think the most important thing that you said 
is the fact that we shouldn't be comparing our journeys as 20 something year olds with other 20 something year olds. There were so many mind moments and gem moments. Um, but if I had to say my favorite moment of the show was this quote you said, perspective is either your power or your prisoner. So we'll catch you same time, same place, right here on In My Twenties. In my twenties, in my twenties. Whew, that's a high note. In my twenties, whose idea was to come up with a jingle at the end of the song? It was gonna be in my twenties. Or do I go in my twenties, in my twenties? If I change the key, in my, in my, in my, in my, in in my, in my, in my twenties, in my. Okay, while I learn the song to my podcast, I'll catch you guys here next week. Okay, bye.